let's go over some elements of muscle strength. So it's the ability of a muscle group to give maximum force. So an example of that would be a one rep max test on bench press. So how much weight can you lift one time? Some common exercises that you would do a one rep max for would be bench press, deadlift, squat, and row. You might do it for other weightlifting exercises, but those are the most common. Now, one rep max testing can be dangerous because you're trying to see how much weight you can lift one time, so it's a lot of weight, and there is risk of injury. So if you don't want to risk and do the one rep max testing, there is a formula where you have to know the weight and reps that you did of a lesser weight. You can plug that in and get an estimate of one rep max, but it's an estimate. It may not be your absolute true one rep max. So types of strength training, you have pyramid, reverse pyramid, periodic overload, eccentric or negative lifts. So pyramid, you start off with your lightest weight first and build up. And so you do several sets with your heaviest being last. Reverse pyramid is just the opposite where you start off with the heaviest amount that you can lift first and then go lighter and lighter until you can't go anymore with your progressive sets after that. And then you have periodic overload. So you may already be lifting a fairly heavy weight and you just keep working out with that but slowly but surely let's say every two weeks you add a pound to it and it's not enough for your body or your mind really to notice and you just kind of trick your body into progressively improving over time but it has to be a small amount and then you have eccentric lifts or negatives where if you're on bench press you would do the negative portion, but you may have somebody else help you lift it back up to the start position, and you keep repeating that. Or maybe you're doing pull-ups, where you slowly lower yourself down, step on a bench to get yourself back up to the start position, and each time you're just lowering yourself. You're just doing the eccentric lift. It can and will improve your strength. Compound muscle groups. So bench press, squat, and row, those hit multiple muscle groups at one time. So if you're doing bench press, that's hitting pectoralis major, the anterior portion of the deltoid, and your tricep. If you're doing squats, you're hitting quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes, gastrocinemus. If you're hitting rows, that's going to hit most of the major muscle groups in your back, like trapezius, latissimus dorsi, rhomboids, teres major, teres minor. But it also hits your biceps. So anytime you pull something to you, your biceps are going to be engaged. Safety, if you're worried or maybe you don't have the technique down or maybe you're older or you just don't have the fitness level and you don't want to do heavy lifting on dumbbells or on barbells, then you can use machines. But it all just depends on your experience level and what you're comfortable with. You may start off with like a chest press and once you improve your fitness you can eventually move to the bench press which would be with a barbell or a dumbbell. Anytime you do free weights there's more of a risk for injury. Metaphysio plates. You don't want people to start too young lifting extremely heavy weights. It's okay to do weight training. But we're talking about power lifting. You don't want young children doing power lifting because it can cause the growth plates, the metaphysio plates, to close early it can stunt their growth so the metaphysial plates are in all the long bones and they allow the long bone to expand and grow if they experience too much trauma either through a broken bone or through extremely heavy lifting that can cause them to close early and then the person won't grow anymore that long bone won't get any longer so anytime you're doing free weights make sure you have a spotter you don't want the weight to get stuck on you, especially bench press. If you mess bench press up, you could get that bar across your neck and that could kill you. So it could crush your trachea or that weight could stay on you. There have been several people that have been killed doing bench press alone. So always have a spotter and watch your form. Plyometric exercises will also improve strength. So they'll improve your power your speed, the disadvantage, the more likely to get injured and you can't do them as often because they're pretty stressful on your body so once or twice a week for 
plyometric exercises, which are great for sport performance, but I wouldn't do them any more than once or twice a week. Then we have proprioceptors. So the Golgi tendon organ, if the muscle gets stretched too much, it's a safety mechanism inside the tendon that if the muscle stretches out too much, it tells the muscle to relax so you don't pull the muscle away from where it's attached. And it's used in types of stretching. So if you've ever heard of proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, that's a type of stretching that activates the Golgi tendon organ. Then we have another type of proprioceptor, the muscle spindle. So if you're doing ballistic stretching, stretch the muscle too much, you could activate the Golgi tendon organ, which it does just the opposite. It tells the muscle to contract. And so if you're at the bottom of your stretch, right when the muscle contracts, you could tear a muscle. So it could injure you. So tearing muscles, we have grade one, grade two, grade three. So grade one, you may feel a little discomfort, um, but you may still be able to move around two, three weeks. You should be back to normal. Grade two, a little bit more extensive. Uh, it may take you two or three months before you're completely back to normal. And, um, and you will have a significant loss of strength and motion. Grade three, complete rupture of the muscle. And then the muscle may actually have to be reattached. You may have to go in to surgery to, if it's torn away from the tendinous attachment has torn away from the bone that's extreme and it's going to take you a while to get over that. Here's an example of a severe muscle tearing. This is Chuck Liddell. He's a fighter. He um, was practicing takedowns. A, gra a guy grabbed his leg, shot him for a single leg. He tried to sprawl. The guy still had the leg and it tore the muscle. So you see a lot of rupturing of the muscle here. It didn't tear away from where it was attached. Uh, but it took him several months to get over this. So um, there's several types, types and locations where you're, you're more likely to get muscle strains, and they're listed there. Hamstring is number one. Muscle strength specificity. So if you're training for sprinting, you want it as specific to that sport as possible. So you're gonna go out and do a lot of sprints. If you're training for powerlifting, majority of the activities that you do should be powerlifting. So you want them as sport specific as possible. So anything that involves plyometrics like high jumping, you want it as close to the real sport as possible. So here we're linking up all the major components of muscle strength and how they're all interrelated. So muscle strength, we're talking about fast twitch glycolytic muscle, that's a type 2B muscle, large motor neuron, really fast contraction rate, 10 to 12 seconds, you'll fatigue. You're using the ATP CP system. This is power lifting and sprinting. <coughs> Supplements to improve muscle strength. Creatine phosphate works. And what's happening is, as you use up the immediate source of ATP within the muscle, that phosphate off the creatine is broken away. It replaces the phosphate bond, and it replaces energy stores quickly. I know that's a simplified explanation, but that's how, that's how it works. And so you're able to recover faster and work out harder. Nitrous oxide increases blood flow, so you're getting more oxygen and nutrients to that area. It causes vasodilation. More blood flow gets in there, you get a better pump. And then protein, one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight will help you maintain. But American College of Sports Medicine recommends 1.8 for muscle strength for proper weight gain. <coughs> Performance enhancing drugs. So an example would be in a, um, testosterone. Helps muscle building. Can cause male traits. Helps athletes uh, recover faster. And reduces muscle damage. Side effects. Prominent breasts in men. Baldness. Shrunken testicles. Infertility. Impotence. Prostate gland enlargement in women. 
deeper voice, a large clitoris, increased body hair, baldness, infrequent or absent periods. And I'm not going to read through all of these. This is for both genders, severe acne and tendonitis. Anyway, there's a bunch. So it's not worth the risk. Anabolic steroids, testosterone is legal. Um, and anabolic steroids has a lot of, of side effects, just like testosterone. So it's, it's really not worth the risk and what you could do long term to your body and some of the side effects most people don't want anyway. So the skill for today, we're going to determine one rep max for a person and you'll be given the weight and reps and you'll use the formula to determine what their one rep max should be.